Welcome to the Shed with the Chandelier. Yesterday I was talking to a lovely friend who, at the moment, doesn't see herself living, she's writing or doing anything particularly creative, creative, although I can see her doing lots of stuff creative, but however, that's how she perceives it at the moment. And we were discussing this and she said that she thinks that most people are creative when they're in turmoil or unstable. My first impression to that is, oh my God, that would be so tiring if that was the case all the time, that you could only create in the midst of turmoil or you were unstable. And then I was looking at something that you'd said, and you'd said that you're going to be doing these righteous workshops, and that you said you were on a crusade to end the tortured artist paradigm and help shift it into the empowered artist paradigm. So I think you've got an opinion on it then, Laura, <laughs> on this whole thing. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been a tortured artist for a long time, and I got really sick of it. It's just, it's um, <clears throat> basing your happiness on things outside of your control is insanity, and that's something I learned during that time in my life and something that I wrote in the book. And um, I had been met with so many rejection letters. You know, here you've spent like two or three years writing this book that with, with your all of your heart and your mind and your yeah. spirit in it whether it's fiction or non-fiction and you get this form letter that says this does not meet our needs at this time yeah. <laughs> and you can look at that like <laughs> like you're a bad writer you're never going to get published or you know you could look at it like wow it just doesn't meet their needs at this time and go on and I, I spent a long time giving it a lot of meaning, you know, and, and feeling Which very is, is very normal in one way, isn't it, if you're on your own sitting doing that. <laughs> but yeah. carry on what you were going to say, sorry. No, well, it is normal, but it, 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 that suffering had become my normal. And, and yeah. I, I had this awareness uh, that, ha that occurred before this marital crisis, actually, was closer to um, the the. the the death of my father when I realized that I was choosing to be miserable by letting yeah. things outside of my control define my happiness, namely uh, the publishing world um, or the security of having that that parent alive. That really rocked me to the core. And, um, and so that's when I started realizing that I had some um, – Control. I had a say in the matter. I I didn't need to give those words meaning, and and so then this fog began to lift, and I started to strengthen the that kind of thinking and that kind of awareness, which is okay. It doesn't meet their needs at this time. Or when my husband said, "I don't yeah. love you anymore," <laughs> it doesn't need to mean I'm unlovable or I'm going to spend the rest so of my life alone. So can I or... <laughs> say this right? This statement that you. So people could think that when you wrote the bestseller, you were in the midst of turmoil. But actually, there was turmoil happening, and you made a choice, didn't you, within that, on how you were going to deal it. So you weren't necessarily, I'm sure you were in turmoil in one respect, but the way you were writing, you're saying that you chose a different way then. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, uh, that, thank you for shining a light on that because I think that's really the central message and what the takeaway is for people that 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 y y you can create beauty even when the world around you is looking pretty grim <laughs> well that's and, what I have I, I have a really really passionate thought about that I really feel that that it doesn't have to be only you know through destruction creativity can happen I really really believe that <laughs> that people can create in all sorts of ways and um so you're gonna you're gonna have these writers workshops aren't you so how how are you going to present that to people or how do you <laughs> feel <laughs> well i was going to say based on what you just said before it's true you can also create being miserable i mean that's like yeah. you're saying that's a for you you can create being destructive it's all it's that we're creating it it's that we have a choice and a lot of us don't feel connected with that choice we think that we just you know something bad happens and then a button is pushed somewhere and we have to have these this sort of reaction to it and that's a lie yeah. 
it's not true. And so it is incredibly freeing when you start working with the idea of creating your life in a way that works. And so that is what I'm going to bring into my writing retreats, the first ones in Mexico this spring. And that is the idea of getting unstuck, seeing how your life isn't working and getting it to work. And, you know, I'm not a therapist and I'm not a motivational speaker, and I, but I yeah. have worked with this in my life as, as an artist and as a, a mother and a wife and a, you know, a friend and a daughter and sister. And I, and so I feel like You've I, lived it. I feel like I can be an authority on, on it because I have lived it and I, it is my practice. Uh, and so writing really is my way to life. But it is yeah. not my life, and that was the equation I had for a long time. Um, so one of the things I think that's so important about being an artist, in, in, in leading the artist's life, is to balance it out with something physical. Because yeah. I think too many of us feel like the, like these heads floating around in the universe. Yeah. Um, but but really, um, that's pretty dangerous. I, I think that we need to be able to move our bodies around. So the one that I'm doing in Mexico is going to be a, a joint yoga and writing retreat. And uh, it's created by my friend at Jennifer Shelter, who is a an amazing yoga goddess <laughs> from yeah. Philadelphia. And she has been leading this retreat called the Radiant Retreat for the last five years. So she's asked me to be the writer uh, in, involved with it. And so together we'll, we'll create this week for people to hopefully find some inspiration and transformation in their lives both by being physical and and because you you're normal way i mean are you a yoga person normally i imagine you out on your horse i mean yeah. <laughs> so your physical day-to-day -day, that bit would that be that for you what how do you do that at home at the moment well, at the moment, it's a little rough because it's, um, you know, there's a That's thick funny. layer of ice all over everything. But including I know. Can you hear the <laughs> rain? We have rain, but we've had um, drought for many years. <laughs> and then now we've got having so much rain that we haven't had in eight years, and it's just starting again. So I hope it's not interrupting because <laughs> it's oh, pattering I down behind. I would love but, to sit in a house in the midst of a good rain right now. We, it's lovely, a, isn't it? It is, and it's very. It's been very dry here this winter, so we don't have a lot of snow. It's just like ice. Um, but you're right. That's. I mean, I don't practice yoga very often. Um, there have been times when I do. But the way that I connect with the physical world is through horses. Yeah. Uh, and walking in the woods. And um, I'm not a real gym gym person. Or I, I do have a treadmill, but it pretty much just has a bunch of towels and bathrooms on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but horses to me require me to show up in the same way I need to show up as a writer at my writing t table, and that is with just if, you know a wide open third eye, if you will, just a complete kind of op like spaciousness and um, being totally present and not working with fear. Because with horses, yeah. you know, when you they can feel your fear, and that's when you get into trouble. And uh, so truly, just being in the moment. And opening your well, I have up. a. I go walking down a beach and a roundabout, and I notice it often. I'm the only, not the only, but really a lot of the time, there's people manically walking, and I'm the only one looking down at the beach and looking at the stones and stuff like that. But that's my time for kind of. So that's my balance time where I'm thinking about all of that, you know, or I'm not even thinking. I'm just being and out and being in the air and doing something else other than what you're working on and then it feeds i find it feeds back into what i'm doing yes because i've got a clear head <laughs> something always happens even if i don't feel like taking a walk and believe me i wish that i had a beach in fact the yeah. novel i'm writing right now the characters are in bodrum turkey right now hanging out on the All beach right. <laughs> up the road from me <laughs> i know i know I, 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 at some point in my life, would like to live on the beach, but it's been the mountains for 19 years for some reason. The mountains are beautiful, too. Mountains and snow. You've got a beautiful view. You can see it on the photos you have, don't you, on Facebook and different things. You've got an amazing view. People would pay millions for it, wouldn't they? And they do. <laughs> in Mon yeah, in Montana. I mean, yeah. that's fantastic. So... Getting back to that, you're walking, you're out on your horse and everything. You come up, so the balance, 
that's what you want to introduce into this course that you're going to do, or this retreat. Not yeah, this course, I, a, know, a retreat. I, yeah, I'm doing. So th- this first one is going to be a little different because it, I'm piggybacking on my friends. Yeah. Um, platform if you want to use that word yeah <laughs> but um no but it's good because people like yoga <laughs> and it's great you know it's a different thing to do so, yeah, and it, it sounds like a beautiful environment and everything that you're going to oh it's going to be in tulum mexico and um we're going to spend the morning doing yoga and then take a break and then spend the afternoon and evening doing writing exercises and sharing our work. And um, I can't wait, frankly. But the the ones that I'm going to be doing um, elsewhere will be just me. And then I'll bring in um, – there will be more like three-day really intensive workshops for people who want to write or who have finished a book – um, who are m- more serious writers, um, not just looking for inspiration and self-expression, but also really trying to learn about craft. And so those will be in Montana, and um, I'm hoping to do one in Italy. And on oh, Cape Can Cop, I come and watch? Be, there's going to be a visual component, because I think that's an, an important part of kind of getting... Well, if you're in Italy, well, anywhere, right? Collages and journals and stuff, too, so it's not all just words that we're going to be playing with. Yeah. Um, got one woman coming from Australia, yeah. And people are coming from all over the place, so I can't wait. I think it's going to be great fun. And then the ones I'll do in Montana and, and elsewhere, I'll bring in private contractors who can do equine therapy with people or or do energy work or maybe, you know, guided uh, meditative silent walks in the woods or, you know, things like that that will be physical because that is not my area of expertise. <clears throat> yeah. Success and everything, the fame bit, you said, is not what people would think and but you are now in the public eye and you how are you managing that with you sitting down writing at home and switching off from that or not or how how do you deal with all of that and still be the novelist Laura who sat writing in Montana <laughs> <laughs> well I th- uh my friend the writer Danny Shapiro calls it getting back into the cave yeah. and I'm in the cave right now and you know I mean it, my life is just like it always has been um, yeah. you know, there's a box of cereal left over from breakfast on the <laughs> kitchen table and dishes to do and lo- lo- lots of laundry to do um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's um, it's helpful living in such solitude out in the great American West because it's yeah. really just I have no witnesses to what I'm doing except for maybe some white-tailed deer and an occasional, you know, bear (laughs) Uh, and my dogs. So that helps to balance out the public stuff. And, uh, you know, really that's more condensed right around the time of publication. So there were two months this spring where I was truly on the road in a different city every day. Yeah. And my husband held down the fort. Our kids are 15 and 11 now, so that's another good thing. They're not little babies. I'm glad this didn't happen then because I, I would have been very... I mean, I have a similar kind of thing because mine are 18 and 13. So it does change how you can work, doesn't it, as they get a bit older? I mean, if there's people that sitting at home in the midst of little ones, it does kind of change all of that, doesn't it, when they get a bit more... And they not drive, and they. <laughs> yeah. I I did I did have a very strong writing practice, however, even when they were babies, and I I had yeah. very strong rules about it, and um you know I just the minute that they went down for their naps, and they had a you know pretty strict nap schedule, and they seemed to like the ritual of it. You know, we would read a yeah. book, and then they'd go, they I sing to them, and then they fall asleep, and I would immediately immediately go into my writing room, and. Just I was talking to a gallery owner the other day, and we were discussing this, and that's what, and someone else, another artist, that's near San Francisco, and that's what she was saying, how she immediately, she got them to sleep when they were little, then she could get to it, and that's what she did. And so you, you, have, you, sorry, I was no, saying, you, you have on. to be diligent. You have to be. Because a lot of people, you know, with writing, I think especially, I hear a lot of people say. You know, I've always wanted to write this one book about, you know, blah, 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 but I just don't have the time. And I really don't have a whole lot of um, sympathy for that because none of us has a lot of time, really. Um, 
you know. And you have to make time, don't you, really? I mean, even in any situation. Because th- you must have been still, were you still writing your blog and stuff while you were doing all the promotional stuff when you were going around? Did you have to do that while you were going around the States promoting? So we are, were you still writing stuff then in hotel rooms and things or not? Did not? Uh. You know, I am not very good at writing in my blog as much as people who are really successful bloggers. Um, yeah. And that is because I, 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 well, for many reasons, but I, I really dislike a longer forum. And if I, and a lot of writers are in trouble right now because they have learned their practice from blogging and from the internet mm-hmm. in little sound bites of 600 to 800 words, and you'll notice. At least I've noticed when I buy books now, there's a lot of white space in a book. People right. are um, used to bullet points and uh, quick, quick sentences. And uh, yeah. I think uh, a lot of that is because of the, the Internet and of the pe- blogging situation. So many people And then people are, are encouraged to do that as well, aren't they, to write it? Uh, but... I don't know about that, because I think people do want to read. I mean, I enjoy reading what you write, and there are so many words to express certain things. Sometimes you need the words to me <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as well. I, I like reading short things, too, just as like a, you know, just to know you're not alone, just to get kind of a, you know, I mean, the Internet is an amazing, obviously, you know, creation, and, and I love that I can contact um writers that I respect or make mm-hmm. new friends like you know this conversation we're having right now is because of the internet uh, I just think that writers need to be careful about balancing their time especially writers who are on the road and uh, you know it, it is difficult so what I because I, I blog for the Huffington Post yeah. and then I have my blog and then I write for magazines they actually pay you, which is a nice thing. That's and, nice thing. <laughs> and then in the meantime, trying to write another book. Uh, and now well, that's another thing that this friend to. said, that people, in motivation, uh, that money must be a, a big issue. You know, in it. but I mean, you were, you were writing and writing and writing when there wasn't money coming in, weren't you? <laughs> For right. your writing. And that's another thing that people don't understand. Even if your book hits the New York Times bestseller list, even if it's published in nine countries, even if you go on it, TV internationally and countless radio interviews, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're making any money off of book sales. In fact, yeah. I think less than 5% of the authors out there are making royalties off of book sales um, because you have to pay back in, in, in book sales at like something like 15% the initial advance that the publishing house gave to you. Yeah. And so really the the money that you get from a book, unless it goes huge, uh, is at the beginning and over the course of four installments. And that's yeah. really it. That's that's the end. So the, the, the it, as a business, uh, you know, this isn't just a creative pursuit for me anymore. This is my livelihood. Your livelihood, yeah. And so I have to be – it's very tricky to know what you do for free and what you don't and what's going to – help sales but the, the truth is that it's all about getting back to work and writing another book yeah and if that's the kind of writer you want to be there are many really successful writers out there who don't really have a book in them and that are you know have a really great blog and they do blog entries every day and and they have big advertisers advertising on their sites and that's how they make money uh but that, that's not really who who i am so i've had to figure that out you have, and if you, I mean, you must, you, in your journeys, you said you've met other authors and things, so have you discussed that, or have you just decided it for yourself, this is what I'm going to do? Well, there's been a lot of discussion, because um, this is all very new to me, the other side of yeah. it, speak, speaking, and, and uh, I do have a, a strong teaching spirit, which a lot of writers don't have, and I do love to speak in public, which many most writers do not like to do. And what, uh, why did you? How did you know you had a strong teaching? Well, be, because over the last two years, I've been asked to speak in universities and high schools, yeah, and at writing conferences um, and retreat centers. So I've I've realized that I just have this big smile on my face the whole time i really really love it because i, I why I do you love it that's really i mean that's fantastic because you wouldn't have necessarily known that when you were sat at home doing your writing would you 
No, but you... I'm very curious about, I, I, well, I really, really care about writers and artists yeah. in general. And I, I feel like society devalues them. And I would like to see us feeling, like I say, you know, empowered and free yeah. to create instead of, like, we have to come from destruction or we, but, you know, or pain. And pain can be a great guide, especially creatively speaking, but it doesn't need to take us down. Our, we don't have to torture our characters. We don't, <laughs> they don't have to die in the end. I, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, I do care about redemptive stories and putting that yeah. at, those messages out into the world. Um, so out of pain grows... Well, I do think we had... I mean, I belong to a, a book group, and not exactly the most serious thing, which is a group of friends that got together, and it used to get me down that all the books were so miserable. I <laughs> mean, not miserable, because that, that's not a great literary critique, but, you know, that there wasn't... It was Why did... The books that had been chosen to be seen to be great were all the, you know, were all like that. That were, there wasn't some shining the light in the world, and sh and it didn't have to be a self help book. That was the other thing. We didn't have to just read, you know, spiritually books and things. There must be other things out there and stuff. So, how do you view that? <laughs> I don't really read self-help books, and when people say that my book is a self-help book, it kind of ouches me because I, 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 it's really not a how-to guide, and and it's pretty dark. I mean, it's big. You know, you well, I read your book because I I heard you being interviewed, and you thought you sound really good. <laughs> That's why I read your book. I have to clarify that before my poor husband gets it that he's like, you know he's out on the or whatever, and he's read it. I made him read it because I I love the way. That you, I don't make him read it. He always says when we go on hall, have you got anything to read? And that wouldn't have necessarily been the first one I think he would have picked up. <laughs> but because yeah. of the way you you write, I love it. I love your directness and you tell a good story, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, that's something that uh, I've been asked a lot about. Like, you know, I've been asked to teach memoir classes right now. And I, yeah. you know. I ha um, do I know how to write a memoir? I didn't really un know, know that I did, and so I've had to yeah. deconstruct why that book works. And I think it's about not trying to sell anybody anything, and not trying to turn yourself into some sort of hero, but really to meet people in in your raw, real truth on the page. You know, and I use the F word in the first paragraph, and I was so worried about all my mother's friends and you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, people I have spoken to, all different kinds of people, all different ages, men, women, you know, married, unmarried, young, old, and every nobody escapes pain. Money can't do it. Nothing. Nobody es escapes pain, and so yeah. I, people are hungry for stories that aren't necessarily difficult to read. In terms of, oh, great. Well, I have to go climb that mountain in Tibet if I'm going to find enlightenment, or oh, yeah. great. Now I have to, you know, chant this 25 times a day, or sit on a mat quietly, or or go, you know, say this many Hail Marys, or what. You know, I think some people yeah. just want to know they're not alone, and that there can be hope in crisis and that you can practice that at the kitchen sink driving your kids to school wherever it doesn't need to be that you go on a big pilgrimage although and there's lots of nice. people <laughs> quietly doing that aren't there in the world as well there's mm -hmm. other folk out there doing it every day mm -hmm. getting down and picking up their pen or going to the computer or picking up a paintbrush or whatever <laughs> people are doing it aren't they Every day. <laughs> every day. I heard from, I, I quote this woman almost in every single conversation I have about my book, but I still am so struck by this one piece of mail I got from a woman in Tel Aviv, Israel, yeah. and she said, I am a blind woman, and I've never been married, but I listened to your book on my computer this weekend, and it helped me get through the greatest loss of my life, and that was the death of my seeing eye dog to cancer. Oh. And that is the power of story and truth and being responsible on the page about how you share it, not trying to make you know expose somebody in a mean spirited way. I was very careful about how much I really exposed my husband and my family during that time because really the book was about my journey, yeah.
And also, he doesn't come out such a bad guy, I don't think. <laughs> Not spoil the book or anything. <laughs> but, anyway. Fan mail. I wouldn't mind sitting and having a, a glass of wine with him as well, eh? So there we go. <laughs> but, I mean, also, but it's very, also, quite a, I don't even want to say generous. You build him up too much and all that. But the fact that, he didn't go, no way, are you putting that out there? I mean, that's quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, you know, my writing statement is, uh, and I think all artists should have some sort of mission statement to really help them know why they're doing this thing day in and day mm-hmm. out without a whole lot of success and for most of us. um you know, just because I got a book published and it did well doesn't mean that there are any promises that I'll get another one published. You have to keep doing it, don't you? <laughs> you have to keep doing it. And so my author statement is something I take very seriously. And it says, I write to shine a light on a dim or otherwise pitch black corner to provide relief for myself and others. And so I think that part of why my husband was okay with me publishing that book had to do with knowing what my author's statement is, that I, I do mm. want to help help other people know that they're not alone. And that's actually... And do you know what? I... The website the website that I'm going to put this on, which it was soon, is called um, Shed Light Conversation. So there you go. We're all trying to shed some light on this for everyone. That's <laughs> so right. that's kind of good. <laughs> I, by the way, I love your... I would love to come sit in your beautiful studio under that chandelier. <laughs> You can anything. <laughs> well, you can. We can virt- We are. We're virtually doing it anyway at the moment. But any time. <laughs> but I think we should. I should let you get back to writing because this has been quite a long chat, and I don't really want to interrupt your life too much longer. <laughs> Although I think well, I could chat to you all morning or all evening. In my. It's been my pleasure, and I, I love when somebody really understands what my book is about. And uh, there's nothing I like talking about more than the creative process. So this has been a gift to me too, Tracy. Yeah, so thank you. And also I hope you don't dwell too much on what people are going to be thinking about this next book, that you just go and be you. That's what I hope you're doing right now in your new novel, because that's what people will want. <laughs> well, thank I, you. Yeah, I, I, I hope that people will receive my fiction writing voice and not always just the world according to me voice because that's the architecture on the page that I love the most and um, we'll hope that this book I'm writing right now will will someday see the light of day. (laughs) It (laughs) will and I have great I have great faith there's a heck of a lot more in Laura Munson than the book she's written (laughs) and there's a lot more to come out in whatever way it comes so I really look forward to that and good luck with all your retreats it's fabulous to have that situation where people it's all set up for them to go and just be and do what they want to (laughs) do so thank you Laura and Love to Montana and your bears and everything. I love that, that there's bears. <laughs> My daughter would love that, the grizzly bear. <laughs> oh. oh, well, thank okay. you, and, and All right. stay in touch, okay? Okay, oh, take care. I can Bye-bye. count on you. Bye. Bye-bye. Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I just don't care. But you've got the love I need to see me through. Sometimes it seems.